In today's video, you'll be learning how to make an animated 3D logo inside of Cinema 4D. Let's do it. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from Grayscale Gorilla with another Cinema 4D tutorial. We're gonna be making this 3D effect using Cinema 4D and a little bit of After Effects at the end. I'm gonna show you how to animate it on, animate your cameras and do a little bit of post-processing to get that final look. Now, if you're trying to learn more about Cinema 4D after this tutorial, don't forget we have our Intro to Cinema 4D series, completely free series over at our website. I'm gonna link it up here and down below as well. All right, with that, let's open up Cinema 4D and let's get started. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D, and the first thing we wanna do is start to build out our 3D text. Now, in other tutorials, you may see me grab the MoGraph Mo Text object, uh, but in this case, for a little bit more flexibility, I'm gonna come up in here uh, into the spline menu and grab the spline text. And you'll see why in a minute, it's gonna give us a little bit more uh, options as far as animating our type. So uh, first thing we need to do is center our text. So in your attributes panel, you wanna come find a line and say set this to middle. Next thing you could type in whatever you want. I'm gonna use all caps and I'm gonna say 3D text just like the example. And then uh, you choose your typeface. Now, for this effect, uh, you wanna choose something nice and chunky and very readable in 3D. Uh, the San Francisco one that uh, tends to be a default isn't a bad choice, uh, but I've been using uh, Typograph Pro a ton lately. It's just a little bit chunkier, more unique of a typeface here. And uh, I've also, for this example, I use Semi-Bold, which will just thin it out a little bit. But you're gonna see um, this effect should work with, with most typefaces. Okay, so now that we have that, we have to um, get the effect where the, the text is not just chunky 3D, but it actually is tracing the outside of our object, outside of our spline. And so for that, what we wanna do is come up into here, into this menu, and uh, get your uh, sweep nerves. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna sweep one object across another object, and that's what the sweep nerve does. Come up into your spline menu, and what we need is the uh, the first object, the object that we want to sweep on top of the second object, and that's how a sweep nerve works. Um, let's set this up, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. The first thing you need is the object that you want to sweep. That is our rectangle. Let's put that in our sweep. And the second one is what you want it to go around, and that's our text. You could go ahead and drag this just below the uh, rectangle. It could get a little tricky. You wanna make sure it looks like this, that the rectangle and the text are children of the sweep. Okay, so now we have this mess. Uh, <laughs> so now what? Well, our rectangle is too large, and uh, we can change this two ways. We can select our rectangle and shrink it down on our width here. Uh, or, or we can also use our scale tool, but let's just use these for to simplify it. This will set how thick it is, and then this width will set how wide it is, right? And we want it to look more like this. And as you shrink it down, you'll see this form. Now for my settings, it seems to be about five, and I don't know, let's go with about 100. And this is the basic part of, uh, of this effect, okay? Now, we're gonna animate this and figure this out uh, in, in more ways, but that's the central part of this effect. Now, what I really wanted to show you was how to make that secondary effect. In the example, there's other little text uh, drawing on inside of this one. So first of all, let's do a, a, a simple version of this draw on effect, and then we're gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna show you uh, another way to add even more layers to this text to make it look a lot more interesting than just how it is. So first, let's go ahead and animate this. And to do that, you want to come up into your sweep object. And uh, the, the two settings that I animate are the start growth and the end growth. So you can see if you go to your end growth and just turn it down, you're gonna see that it, boom, draws right on. So that's really what we're animating. So instead of starting just from this, the start and going all the way to the right. Instead, what I do is I kind of set it somewhere in the middle, some, something like, okay, 41 and 41, let's say. And then I animate both of them going out. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, I said 41, so let's start there. 41, 41. That's gonna essentially have nothing in the viewport. And then the set keyframes, I'm going to hit command on my keyboard and, and click on start growth and end growth, boom. That's gonna set two uh, keyframes 
uh, right there at frame zero on our timeline, okay? And if you haven't animated in Cinema 4D, um, it's it's not that difficult, especially with simple objects like this. Just scrub to the um, end of your timeline. For my case, it's 72. Yours might be 90 frames. Um, I'm currently running 24 frames a second, so that might change what yours is. But just go to the end of your timeline, and now I want you to set your start growth to zero and your end growth to 100, okay? And then you don't forget you have to click these uh, um, keyframes here to turn them red. And this will set two more keyframes. Now look, when we scrub through our timeline, we have that animation going on. Now this is great, um, but we want to add a little bit more detail to this scene. So what do we do? Well, let's duplicate our sweep. I'm gonna hit Command C, Command V with our sweep selected. And this is our second sweep. Now, how do we make this one different? Well, you know, we could try to change the typeface, but this tends not to work. If you have a typeface that has, you know, thinner versions, it doesn't quite line up the way you think it will. Um, you see it's not inside the text. So let's undo that. I just hit Command Z to undo. And instead, I'm gonna use a slightly different technique for this rectangle, okay? And what's tricky is, is um, it's gonna look a little weird, but the reason we're doing it this way is so that we could keep our text and our rectangle all parametric, and we don't have to bake anything down, and we don't have to, um, it's all non-destructive. And that just means we could change our text later on down the road. So here's how you build this. Uh, we're gonna bring our rectangle out of the scene for now, and we're going to, uh, add two more items to our scene here. Let's go up to this menu here and add a null, and then come up into this menu and add a connect object. Now, a connect object is a wonderful thing. Uh, whenever I'm stuck, whenever I'm trying to do something unique, a connect object almost always fixes it. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, we have other videos about the connect object and what it does, but just know that this setup here um, allows us to move this rectangle uh, without making the rectangle um, editable. Okay, so in our connect object, we're gonna drag the null, and then we're going to drag the rectangle, okay? And then the connect object, we're going to put back where the rectangle used to be, okay? And let's tr just turn off this other one for now. Um, uh, you know what, let's leave it on actually. <laughs> that is how you turn it off if you want. You can just X all these out. But let's leave it on just so we can see what's going on. Let's grab our null, and let's start moving it left and right. And this is the effect we're trying to build. See how there's these layers. Now you can't go crazy with it, although that could look pretty interesting if you animate something like that, or if you go backwards. But what we're really trying to build is this. We're just trying to go inside of our text a little bit and build something, like I said, a little bit more unique that is inside of our text that we could also animate. Now in this case, this is why we use this connect null rectangle um, set up because what you can't do is move your rectangle, okay? Just to be clear, like that's why we have our connect null rectangle little setup here because you can't just grab the rectangle and move it around. You have to put it in this little sandwich so that, so that you could take the null and move it around. Okay, so now that we have this set up, let's change our rectangle settings. Uh, I'm gonna shrink the width even more to make it a little bit more narrow. Um, and uh, I'm also gonna add the height and turn this up a little bit. This is gonna peek that 3D element out from the text a little bit more. It'll catch some more light as we start to add lights and textures here. Okay, and uh, speaking of that, uh, right before we add all of our lights and textures, let's finish the animation. Right now, they're both animating on in the same uh, pattern because we just copied and pasted it. But it's pretty simple to set up a new pattern for our second animation. So come up to your sweep here, and you'll see that on our timeline, we, we have those two keyframes from the original sweep animation that we made. But in this case, we just want to, we don't want to change the end. We want the end to look like this. We just want to change where it starts. So let's go back to the beginning and rather, rather than have it start at 41%, let's have it start at something like 80%. Okay. This will just mean the animation will start further down in uh, the text. So don't forget to click and set your keyframes for that. And so now both of those points are starting from um, 80 
and they're going to overlap. And, um, you know, we have other videos about principles of animation and how to make more interesting animation, but overlapping your animation and having more than just one thing happening at once is a nice way to catch interest and, and make your uh, animation look more interesting. Okay, so now that we have that, we have the, the base of, of, our, of our animation. Let's just hit play and see how this looks in the viewport. And okay, we, we could start to jump into the lighting and the texturing. So I'm just gonna go to our last frame so we can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna add that back plate. Uh, this back plate is gonna allow us to um, uh, you know, catch shadows and make it look like it's kind of sitting on a wall. So let's grab a plane from our uh, object menu up here. Let's grab a plane, come down to orientation and select negative Z. That's just gonna flip it up so it's gonna like a wall and less like a floor. And then we could use these little orange nubs to like scale it up. You could also use width and height here and just make it big enough to where uh, it's not showing at the edges of our screen. Okay, so now that we have that, let's see what our animation looks like. Now, I in the example, I have one more a uh, piece of animation, and that's our actual rectangles that are scaling out uh, as they're being drawn on. And we can do that really quickly. Let's go to our end animation. And this is a really popular technique with animation is to start at the end, where, where especially with logo build-ons and things like this, start at the end where you know this is what you want it to look like, set a keyframe for that, and then go to the beginning and set up where you want it to start. Okay, so uh, we're going to go to both of our rectangles and we're gonna we're gonna animate both of them um, at once. Okay, so I'm going to hold the rec uh, click this rectangle, come down to this other rectangle and click command. and this is uh, in, and all and select it. And this is going to select both rectangles. It's going to allow me to set a keyframe for width and height. Now, Earlier on, I said you had to click command to make these keyframes. Um, in later versions of Cinema 4D, you, you don't even need to click command. You could just click these key, these uh, red buttons and you'll start animating right away. So, okay, that's where I want it to end up. Let's go um, to the, uh, not quite to the beginning because we need to see the example. If we go to the beginning, there's no way we could really see uh, what we're animating. So we're gonna cheat a little and go to, uh, you know, like, let's say like halfway back. And then I'm gonna set um, the width down a little bit, not to zero, let's go to one. And our height, we're also gonna set to something like 10. So it's really thin and minimal. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and set keyframes for both of those, click height, click width. And so now you can see that it's also animating the thickness over time the thickness of our rectangle. And that's gonna you know, have these jump out at you. Well, I don't want this to start at frame 32. I actually want it to start right away. So we could just grab this keyframe and move it over to zero. And as long as you have rectangle, both of these rectangles selected, then both of them should go over, okay? And if not, just go ahead and click both again, like we did before, where uh, you selected one and then command selected the other to select both. Okay, so this is roughly what we're uh, trying to go for. You could offset these animations if you wanna add a, a little bit more interest. Uh, but let's start to light and texture this, and then we'll get into some final little details toward the end that'll really help this animation shine. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, roughly set up our camera. We'll probably animate our camera as well, uh, but let's let's start adding some lights and textures because I'm tired of looking at this <laughs> this gray animation. Okay, down in your materials library, go to create, or not on your library, but in your in your empty box here, go to create, go to new material, and uh, let's just make this the white material. This is really simple. This will be our outside sweep. This is the first sweep that you made. Okay, um, and and then come into your materials and 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 say new material again. Now this one, uh, we're gonna turn off the color channel. That's gonna make it really simple uh, black color. And we're gonna set this to our second sweep. Okay, so that's our inside texture. And we're gonna come in and tweak these in a second, but let's get the rough textures going. Let's go to new material. Let's go to color and pick a nice um, background color. In our case, uh, in the demo, there's like this, uh, this pretty saturated blue, not too crazy. 
Uh, and of course, you could always match it to whatever you're trying to do. That's a little too uh, purpley for me. And so, right there we go. There we go. See, that was too purpley. That's looking a little better. Okay, so we have uh, our three textures. And um, we also now need to uh, add some lights. Okay, so the first light we're going to add is an area light. So if you hit render right now, you're just going to see like floating text. There's no shadows. Nothing is really happening. Um, and the area light is key. Um, you know, a good light source, sometimes one good light source will help um, like set a scene up and give shadows, do the whole thing. So come up to your light menu, go to area light. And unfortunately, there's a lot we have to do to make this area light look good. If we back it out and we hit render, you can see uh, it's really not too much better than what we had before. It still looks very kind of fake 3D. Um, but there are some settings in our area light to help make it look better. Now the first one is in our general menu. Come down to shadow and go to area shadows. And, and already, right away, you'll, you'll see we have some nice shadows. This is already much better. Um, and so after that, you wanna come up to, uh, to go to your um, details menu and scroll down and you'll see fall off. Now, fall off, there's a lot of options. Inverse square, uh, physically accurate, is where I tend to start. So let's start there, and let's move our light up and uh, angle it. This is our rotate tool. We can just click our rotate tool, and uh, you may see me move around in the screen. Uh, this is uh, kind of a little bit beginner, but if you're just watching this, you may just be starting in Cinema 4D. One, two, and three are the keys I'm hitting in my, in my screen to move around. Okay, so let's grab our light, let's rotate it down, let's scale it up a little bit. I'm using these orange nubs, and I'm going to angle it back a little bit, try to get some nice shadows below the light. Okay, even more shadows. I'm going to aim it a little bit higher, rotate it down a little bit more, and shrink the light a little bit. That may be a little dark, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one more time. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see my light move up. And I may have to make my light a little bit brighter. So go to your general tab, turn this up, and you're really gonna get the nice highlight, but you're also gonna get some nice shadows down here. Okay, so we're starting to get nice shadows, but they're too dark, okay? This is a real key when it comes to, um, when it comes to 3D, textures and lighting are everything. The textures and lighting make you know, what What could look like some really fake looking 3D, just come to life. It makes it look more natural. Um, and so dialing in your textures and your lighting is really what's key. You're gonna see we're not gonna change a ton uh, as we progress through this tutorial, except for the textures and lighting. Um, so how do we make this look more uh, beautiful? Well, one thing is, is add in a fill light, okay? Now we have other ways to light in other tutorials. In this case, we're just gonna use the, the default basic lights. Um, and I'm just gonna choose the, the regular light here and come down and click this button right here, ambient illumination. Click, this is gonna brighten up the entire scene. Now if I if I click render, you're gonna see it's a little too bright, but, but it, it filled in a lot of those shadows. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is drop it down something closer to 40, 50%. And we can also make it just a little bit blue. I tend to always add a little bit of color to my lights, make it look a little bit more natural, and bam, there we go. So now we have our shadow coming down from the top, okay? Then we have our fill light that's kind of filling in the details, but now what we're missing is something pretty critical, which is the contact shadow with the floor. Now, good news is Cinema 4D has, um, in the render, render settings, a nice effect that pulls this off. Come to your render settings, go to effect, go to ambient occlusion, and there's tons of settings in here we get into in other videos, but just for now, check out what ambient occlusion does right away. It gives you these nice little contact shadows on the uh, where, where the wall meets the text in between the little cracks here. It fills in all the little details inside. This will help a ton. Okay, and while we're here, let's talk about our rectangles. Our rectangles are currently perfectly square. And I'm going to take our camera and I'm going to hit two on my keyboard just to zoom in and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit render. Our, our rectangles are perfectly 90 degree corners. 
And this is just uninteresting. Not only is it uninteresting, but it, it is unrealistic and unnatural. Almost everything we have in our world around us has at least a little bit of a bevel in the corner. And what's great about this bevel is it catches light and it makes things look much more realistic when you have it. So let's go to our rectangles and I'm gonna select both again, command, select the other rectangle. I'm gonna turn on rounding and our, set our radius to something really small like one. In fact, for this one, I'm gonna set it uh, to one, and then on the other one, um, I'm gonna set it even uh, smaller, something like 0.5. And this is just gonna give us a little bit of edge rounding on the corner. I'm gonna make it even smaller. And I'm, while I'm zoomed in here, I'm gonna hit render, and you're gonna see now that the, the um, edges have this little bevel going on. Okay, and um, in fact, I might try to turn this up. I'm trying to find a part of the rectangle where, where this is a little bit more natural. We may have to play around with this, but you know, we're at the point of the tutorial where you dial things in to taste. So now what we have are, is a lot more light action going on with the edges of our type here. So you can see um, the, that the front parts of our text here are all lit up. This is our specular that is in our textures, uh, which we talk about in other tutorials. You could dive in here and play with the specular of your reflectance. Go ahead and click in reflectance. You could turn this up and down. So if I do that for the black texture, you'll see that now our, these little areas are even brighter in the front. Okay, and I'll let, uh, oh, this is the white one. You could do it with the black texture as well. Uh, nope, there we go. And start to dial these in. Uh, and add a little bit more of this gloss. See this D now is catching way more light. And again, these settings, these interactions between textures and lighting is where things tend to look much more uh, interesting um, and just pleasing to the eye. Okay, so we're getting close here. We have our animation. Now let's set up our camera uh, and start to play around with some camera animation as well. So let's go to our, our camera. And for this camera, I'm gonna set something a little bit longer focal length. Right now we have this 36 millimeter lens, which is just kind of boring. Um, what I wanna do is flatten everything out. So I'm gonna choose something like 100 millimeters, which means we do have to zoom out, but it does make our text much more flattened out and less, uh, it just adds less parallax. And it allows us, frankly, to make the text a little bit more readable as well. It's also gonna catch more of this light over on the three and the D, and uh, it's looking good. This wall, you know what? I'm not a fan of uh, how like purpley our wall is still. I'm gonna pull this back away from magenta, more bluish, almost more now into green land. Mm, let's adjust it. So again, we're getting to that point, and, and you know, our tutorials are all about workflow and, and how we work. Um, you know, we're not big fans of tutorials where we just tell you exactly which buttons to click at all times and then you could just go on. I want you to see this as a workflow. You're at a point in your animation now where you're starting to look at things like readability and the interest of the, of the bevel. Like I'm gonna come up to our first bevel here and set this to, uh, you know, something a little bit larger. I want a little bit more edge on that bevel. And uh, I'm gonna even set this one a little bit bigger as well, try to catch more light. Okay, so now if I'm happy with our final kind of resting area here, uh, where, where our camera is, we could start to animate the camera as well. So what's a good way to ca animate a camera? Well, uh, this is the, the quick way that I've, uh, the, the, the quick workflow that I, I use, and it's just use two cameras, especially for a simple move like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our camera. I'm gonna hit Command C, Command V. And there's a ton of different ways to animate cameras, but let me show you a, a relatively easy one. Um, so this camera is our, 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 our first main camera, and then our second camera, if we click this little box right here, it'll go to our second camera, and this will be kind of maybe where the animation starts. So let's back up, and we don't really even need to animate the timeline. We just need to pick a new position for this camera. So while this camera is selected over here, this box is on, I'm gonna hit three on my keyboard and click and rotate and come up a little bit more. And this is a really simple camera move, but it's gonna start flat, and then it's gonna transition down to there. And if you click between your two cameras, that's your camera move. 
You just want it over time to animate a little bit um, more interesting than just like how fast this is. So how do you do that? Well, uh, you wanna make sure your first camera is up at the top. So I'm just gonna click return on my keyboard and rename this to first. And then uh, I hit down on my, on my um, number pad. And then I'm gonna say second. And this is the order of our cameras. I want you to shift select the first and second camera together. And then you come up into here. Uh, I always forget where it is, but I always find it relatively easily here. And it's create, there it is. Your third menu over here is create. Come down to uh, camera. And then go to um, camera morph. Now click this, boom. What that's gonna do is it's gonna set your first and second camera into a camera morph. You'll see it down here, first, second. And then we have this blend. Okay, so don't forget, you also have to select your morph camera, click that, and then now you can animate your blend camera from boom to bam. Okay, so let's start with our, our second camera first. Okay, we're gonna animate backwards just like we always do. The last keyframe here, I'm gonna set a keyframe for 100% blend, and then I'm gonna move our uh, time all the way back and move our blend all the way back and click again and that'll set those two keyframes. And then the computer does the rest. It'll animate between those two and give us this nice camera animation. So, you know, we have our bevel, we have our text animating out, and we're getting to a point where we can start to look at this uh, and say, you know, what other things do we need to do? What what are we missing? Is is everything readable? And as as an uh, as a designer, what I'm doing is saying, okay, what 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 am I what am I trying to accomplish with this animation? Is it interesting? Is it clear? Is it readable? What's the uh, feeling of this to the to the um, to the um, you know viewer? And to me, you know, this is a very simple title, but it's very readable. It's interesting. This rectangle here, um, I I'm still not 100% happy with with the bevel. I'm going to select this this. Um, this uh, rectangle edge and add even more of this rounding to it to try to catch even more light, okay? And I could even add a little bit of thickness. So maybe that's really what we're missing is like a little bit extra chunkiness. Now don't forget if you change the outside here, you have to reset your keyframe. See how it's yellow? You wanna make sure you're at the end or if you, or if you wanna change the beginning, go to the beginning, but then click this uh, there and now our, our chunky outside is much, much thicker. So now if we pause this here, you know, we have this, um, we have this nice bevel coming through. Okay, so you can see we're at the place where we're tweaking things, you can change your wall color. And what's great about this technique is you could even come in here uh, into the text itself. And if you select both text by clicking uh, command um, on your keyboard and selecting the other text, you can, uh, you know, you could type in your favorite band and now, you know, bam, you got, uh, you got a new animation based on a new word. Okay. So this is the power of these techniques is that you can change it. Now I'm just going to undo that. And so, um, you know, if you follow along this long, you want to know, like, how do I render this out? Because the, Next step, we're gonna head in After Effects for just a little bit to add a little bit of blurry, you know, start to it, a little bit of color correction, and just to add a little bit extra detail to this render. Well, come into your render settings, go to your output, and you wanna set your output uh, resolution. For uh, this one, we can do uh, 1920 by 1080. Nice big HD frame here. We can come down to our frame rate. Now, I used 24 frames a second. And if you use 30, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna set it to all frames. And um, the standard render options should be fine for this effect. If you see any anti-aliasing, you may want to, um, you know, if you see any aliasing on your text, you may wanna turn this up, turn this to best, and set this to something like, you know, one, two, maybe. Um, but for now, I think for, for this type of text where there's not a lot of, or any reflections really, you could usually get away with geometry and it'll render even faster. So uh, we're looking good. We're going to go to save. I want you to click these three dots here and then pick where you want this to go out. So in this case, I have uh, Cinema 4D renders. 
I'm gonna say, it's a, call this a new folder and say 3D text tutorial. Tutorial, how do you spell? And then 3D text tut, that will save our uh, our frames there. And then for our format, uh, I tend to use pings, 16-bit pings, boom. And then uh, we should be good. Okay, so um, we have everything set up. We have our output set to all frames. I'm gonna hit Shift R on my keyboard. Uh, Shift R is gonna render to the picture viewer and it's gonna go frame by frame and render out this animation. Now, you'll see it jump to frame two. You start to see the little um, uh, black text coming in here. The white outline is starting to come in there. And frame by frame, it's gonna render out. So why don't we take a break here, let this render, and uh, let's jump into After Effects and do the final color correction and make this thing look extra good. All right, our render is all set. Let's head on into After Effects and finish this up. In After Effects, um, you're gonna want to import your footage you just rendered. Uh, one way to do this is ju just double click here in the project uh, square, and this will tell you like, hey, where do you wanna in, you know, input your uh, footage? So it, for me, it's in my media drive, it's in um, Cinema 4D Renders, and it is called 3D Text Tutorial. And you could just select the first uh, image in a sequence and make sure you have, um, uh, you don't want create composition on, but you do want ping sequence on, and you click open, and uh, you can drag this into this uh, button right here. Just drag your new footage into here, and it will make a new composition. So I guess we could have left the new composition thing on, but a little old school, that's how I, how I do it. Okay, so here we are. We have our uh, animation. I'm gonna move our, um, uh, our uh, timeline down, just so we could have a little bit more room. And then I'm going to come up here to preview and uh, click this little play button. You can also hit zero on your keyboard. If you have an extended keyboard, you hit zero, it will uh, render all this out as well and give you a, um, a, a little example of what your scene looks like. Now for this, we're set to quarter resolution, so it's a little bit uh, pixelated, but that's gonna allow us to work a little bit faster. In fact, we don't need to go quite that low. We can go to half res and um, hit hit zero again or hit that play button up here and After Effects will render it out. Okay, so what are we doing here in After Effects? You know, it's almost done. This, this animation looks pretty good. Well, rather than worry about that color of the background and all the little details and the, the overall contrast, what I always do with my renders is get it out of Cinema 4D and into After Effects where I can do some color correction and then a little other compositing tricks. Uh, if you remember, if you've watched the example at the beginning of the tutorial, we have a nice little blurry effect at the beginning that I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So what's first? Well, let's go to layer, new adjustment layer, and uh, we're gonna add curves to that. So over here in your effects and presets window, if you don't see it, you can come up to window and click on effects and presets. You're gonna go type in the search menu here, curves. And uh, up, you'll see color correction curves. And you could drag this on top of your adjustment layer. And your effect window should pop up. Now, I'm just going to give us a little bit more room here. And now, what do we do with curves? Well, um, you know, we get into more detail with what curves are in other videos. But for now, curves, it allows you to add contrast. Uh, you could do this simple little S shape. And, and you can actually turn this on and off and see the difference. We're adding a little bit of contrast to this render. Um, and rather than do all this in 3D, we're doing this in After Effects where it's much much faster. But I'm gonna turn this to full res just so we could see the final look here. And you can scrub between it and look and you could say, okay, this is good, but the shadows are a little too dark for me. Let's brighten those up. Or even you could raise the black point all together so there's nothing that falls all the way to black and then still have a little bit of shadow. Another way you could do this is come up into your curves and go to your blue channel and uh, you probably see me do this trick before. If you haven't, you can just lower the uh, blue uh, highlight point just by clicking on that dot. You can do the same with the shadow and raise it. And this is gonna add a little bit of blue in your shadows. This is overdoing it, of course, but that's a essentially what the effect is in a very minute, kind of minimal way. And this is just adding a little color in your shadows. Um, and to me, uh, it's always a, a good effect to try. Sometimes it doesn't work. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm just tweaking, right? 
Okay, so from here, what else can we do? Well, it looks like uh, there's this nice little highlight on the background. The specular from that area light is really lightening up the top here. And what I wanna do is make it look like there's a little bit of a lens flare on top of our scene. Just enough to say, hey, there's this really bright light source. In the real world, this bright light source would add a little bit of, you know, kind of a um, glow on our lens. So how do we recreate that? Well, let's go to layer, new, solid. And uh, I'm gonna go to the color of my solid. And what the, hey man, we could, uh, what the, we could just uh, select the color of our background. Um, not quite sure why I said what the hey, but maybe I was maybe I was gonna swear or something. Or I don't know. Okay, so um, come up into your masks now and go to your ellipse tool, and I want you to create an ellipse that looks kind of like this. And now I just clicked and dragged. I'm also gonna hit space bar to reposition it, and I'm just trying to put it on top of where that glow is and a little bit over the text, something like that. I'm holding down space to move it. If you let go of space, you could rescale your mask. Let go. I'm gonna hit F for feather. You wanna make sure that your solid is selected, F for feather, and then you wanna crank up the feather on that text, okay? Let's put it below our adjustment layer, and then also let's uh, come over to our modes here and turn on screen, okay? That is pretty cool. We got a nice little glow going. It is way too bright. So I'm gonna hit T for transparency, Okay, and this is gonna turn on uh, opacity, but I always remember it as T for transparency. And you could turn down that effect. And just you just want that little bit of glow on top of this scene. So you can see without it, a little bit dark now, right? This just brightens it up. Okay, what else can we do? Well, let's do that final uh, uh, blur effect that you may have seen at the beginning of this tutorial, and uh, I think we could wrap up. So, how do we get that blurry effect? Well, we're gonna use uh, a lens blur. Now, there's other ways to do lens blurs and After Effects, but there's one that's built in that's not so bad. It's pretty good. Um, so, down on your 3D text um, composite, you can just add it directly to this. And so let's go um, kind of halfway through our, our text here because this is where the blur is gonna be. Let's go to our effects and presets and type in lens blur. And there it is, camera lens blur. Let's go ahead and drag that to our layer. And this is just directly on our 3D render layer. And um, let's get the amount of blur that we want. So you could crank up your blur radius and you can see we get this nice lens blur effect. Now. Uh, one thing I wanna make sure you have on is repeat edge pixels. This is gonna get rid of this little uh, uh, kind of shadow around the edge. Go ahead and click that, bang, turn that off. And you can see uh, it, it takes a little bit to render, but um, it really has a pretty good look to it. So all we want is this right at the beginning. So I'm gonna reduce this down, something like 30 maybe. Okay, let's start there. I'm gonna go to frame zero. I'm gonna set the blur radius uh, and turn it on as a keyframe. Now we animate it in cinema and it's uh, just as easy in After Effects. Over here, there's this little stopwatch. Click the stopwatch to turn that on. And then uh, that's gonna set a keyframe at 30. Now, as we go into our animation somewhere around one second, we can then say, okay, here I want it to be zero. So I just clicked on it, hit zero. And now we can go up here in this preview panel and hit play stop. And this is gonna build our RAM preview. And uh, what it's doing is just rendering all these frames and then allowing us to watch it back in real time, which is nice, right? Another reason to, to get back into After Effects rather than um, wait in, um, in cinema to, to get it perfect. Okay, so now it's rendering those blurry frames, which take a little bit longer. You can see um, the camera lens blur is, is not the fastest thing, uh, but the result is gonna be pretty cool. So here we go, we're getting close and bam, you have this nice little blurry. Now from here, if you're following along, this is you know the end of the tutorial, but what I'll have you do as an experiment is you know play with this experiment. Well, how, how can you push this? Could you have two lines of text? Could you add another third 
type of animation? Could you have a transition at the beginning? This is where, you know, taking a tutorial like this, really adding other elements to it, maybe watch another tutorial and add that effect to this, uh, it is really how I um, learned how, how to combine things together. So, um, you know, if we're here, you know, see what other things you could bring in, but you know, I think there's a lot that you could do with this technique. Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget, if you want to learn more about motion design, check out our website. We have hundreds of free tutorials over there. And also don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube as well. We always have new tutorials coming out and new training to help you become a better motion designer. And with that, I just wanted to thank you one more time for watching and I'll see you hopefully in another video really soon. Bye. It's a weird buy. That was a weird buy. My other buys are not that weird. Now it's getting extra weird. Bye.